Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm now answering question number two from the IGCSE International um, International GCSE um, Cambridge Paper for Extended October 2009 Paper 0580 Paper Four, and this question is about transformations. Now, part of this question, which is basically the last parts of this question are now removed from the syllabus. But just for completeness sake, I will answer those parts of the question, but I'll put them on a separate video. I'll put them on a separate video, the last parts which are now being removed from the IGCSE syllabus. They might be in other syllabi or somebody might be curious as to how to answer them. So I will still go through them, even though they've been removed from the syllabus, um, just so that um, you know it's a bit complete but in a separate video. So I don't kind of confuse those students who are taking the syllabus. Um, so the last parts of this question, which are question A part um, four and part B, all of that is now removed from the syllabus. So I'm going to answer in this video up to part three, A part three, and then I'll do another separate video for the rest of it. Okay, now for this question number two, part A says, describe fully the single transformation which maps the triangle T onto the triangle U. So T onto U. So we want to find the the transformation that takes T to U, and we can see that it's basically been reflected. They're congruent triangles. They're the same height, the same base, but they're kind of like mirror image. So we've got to find what the mirror line is. Now the mirror line is always a line which um, basically is a perpendicular bisector of a, a point on the image and the point on the object, the corresponding point of the object. Now here we don't have to do any drawing or anything like of perpendicular bisector. It's very simple because we have a, a um, you know a grid here. And it's, it's quite simple to see that, okay, the distance between this point and this point, which correspond to each other, you can see from the grid is one, two, three, four. So halfway between them, which is that point there, will be the mirror line. So we've got to describe this, this reflection by using a mirror line. So the mirror line will be this line here, which is, has the equation x equals 1. Okay, so that's the equation x equals 1. All right, that line there, and that's the mirror line. So for, for part A, A part 1, it's basically a reflection. All you have to mention is a, the type of transformation. It's a reflection, okay, in the line um, x equals 1. And that's the answer. Two marks, one mark for mentioning that it's a reflection, and one mark for giving the equation of the mirror line. Okay, so that's how you describe a reflection. Then it says T onto V, T onto V. Now here, T onto V, you can see that this thing has been rotated. Okay, it's been rotated for sure, right? And um, if I were to draw T, you'll see it looks like this. Okay, so you can see that T and V, uh, like if I rotate T around, I'll have the same, same type of shape as V. Okay, it will be the same shape as V. You can see that that's the same shape exactly as V. All right, so I've rotated T through 180 degrees for it to look like the same shape as V. Okay, I rotated 180 degrees and it looks the same as V. So I know that T and V are rotations. Now, there's a couple of ways I could deal with rotations, but I can see that I had to rotate it 180 degrees. And when you've got a rotation of 180 degrees, that kind of makes life easier because it's really easy to find the center of rotation without using any tracing paper or anything like that. You can just join together a point and its image, for example, the point here and the point there. And another point and its image, look at the, the corner of the right angle here and the corner of the right angle there. And where those lines intersect is the center of rotation. That works for 180 degrees. Okay, that works for 180 degrees. That's the center of rotation. So when it's 180 degrees rotation, it's really easy. You can just join a point and its image and join another point and its image where those two lines intersect will be the center of rotation. That works only for 180 degrees rotations. Otherwise, you could use a tracing paper like I've done in a previous example and you know work out where the center is if it's a bit difficult. So there we have 
the center of rotation, which is one zero. So this is a rotation. Okay, so you mentioned it's a rotation. So it's a rotation. And you can say that the center of rotation is one zero. And you can say that the angle of rotation is 180 degrees. Okay, so you mentioned 180 degrees. Now, because 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if I go around clockwise or anti-clockwise, I end up in the same place. So I don't have to mention clockwise or anti-clockwise for 180 degrees. So that's enough information for me to get the full marks here. Saying it's the rotation, giving the center of rotation, and giving the angle of rotation, that's enough. I don't have to mention anything more than that. Okay, so rotation, center 10, and angle 180 degrees, and that's enough for that answer there. Okay, that's part two, A part two. Now it says A part three says triangle T onto triangle W. Okay, let's go from T to W. So now T to W, we can see for sure this is an enlargement. Okay, it's an enlargement. Now how do you find the center of enlargement? Um, well, you join together a point and its image. So let's join the same points again. This point on the uh, on the image and this point on the object, and you just you carry on drawing it further back until it goes okay further back. Let me just make this some more space, and then I can join another point in this image. Well, the other point is basically this this point and that point which you know coincide so basically where the the lines meet for an enlargement so I've joined a point and its image and I've carried it on I've joined a point and its image and I've carried it on where those two lines or those lines meet is the center of enlargement so that's the center of enlargement here okay and now I can uh, work out the rest so I know this is an enlargement so for for enlargement you have to mention um, you have to mention it's an enlargement. So it's an enlargement. And you have to give the center of enlargement, which we've worked out is this point over here, which is 6, 4. 6, 4 is the center of enlargement. Okay, so that's the center of enlargement. And then we've got to work out the scale factor of enlargement. The scale factor of enlargement is pretty simple. You just go to the image. So it says T onto W. So W is the image. Choose a length on the image. For example, let's choose this base. This goes from minus 3 to 6. So the length of this base is 9 units long. And from here you go from 3 to 6. So the length of the base here is 3 units long. So the scale factor is the length on the image divided by the corresponding length on the object. So it's 9 over 3, which is 3. Okay, so the um, scale factor of enlargement is 3. So all the lengths have been scaled up by 3 units. Okay, so that's enough for you to get the 3 marks for this question. You mentioned it's an enlargement. You give the center of enlargement and you give the scale factor of enlargement. And there's the answer to part 3. And as I said, part 4 is telling us to find uh, u onto x. Now u onto x is something which has been taken out of the syllabus. It's actually called a share. So I'm not going to go through um, this in this video, but I will in the uh, in the next video I make. I'm going to go through these parts which are outside of the syllabus. Okay, um, so part four, part B, all of them are about transformation matrices. Well, the whole topic of matrices has been removed now. So, of course, transformation matrices will have been removed as well. So all of part four and B are now out of the syllabus. So I will include those in a separate video. Um, now, other questions to do with transformations which are within the new syllabus will be found in this playlist over here. Um, other questions from this paper as well, there will be a playlist on this side which has questions from this paper, including the ones that I eventually do which are outside of the syllabus. I'll also put them in the same paper. And you, uh, you'll have, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. On the top of the page, you'll have a link to a past paper um, which is uh, from the new syllabus of IGCSE. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.